Thank you. Our second presenter today is Susan Levin from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Please begin. Thank you. Since the last dietary guidelines, my organization has been assessing the research showing the ill effects of consuming red and processed meat products and dairy products, two areas of weakness in the guidelines that are otherwise increasingly more evidence-based. In 2011, the World Cancer Research Fund noted that there is convincing evidence, the strongest language possible, that the consumption of red and processed meat products is linked to colorectal cancer. In 2012, a meta-analysis continued to build on this declaration and found that the risk of colorectal cancer increased by 30 to 50 percent with the consumption of red and processed meat products. Two other meta-analyses conducted by the Imperial College of London found similar association, associations with red and processed meat product consumption and its link to colorectal, colorectal cancer as well as tumors. In addition to these numerous reviews, there have been several epidemiological studies published since the last dietary guidelines, including findings from the Cancer Prevention Study 2, the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, the Nurses' Health Study, and the EPIC Study showing red and processed meat linked to all causes of death, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. In light of the overwhelming evidence related to red and processed meat product consumption and illness, the British government altered its dietary guidelines for the first time in 13 years to explicitly advise against overconsumption of red and processed meats. The World Cancer Research Fund says there is no safe amount of processed meat to consume and recommends children should never eat these products. The 2015 dietary guidelines should use the same explicit and forthright language to help protect the health of American consumers and to clarify any confusion about appropriate protein choices. I would secondly encourage the esteemed committee to stop allowing the dietary guidelines to promote the consumption of dairy products as an essential food. Although the guidelines recommend replacing high-fat dairy products with low-fat versions, most consumers continue to eat high-fat dairy products such as cheese, the number one source of saturated fat in our diets, according to the last guidelines. Low-fat dairy, however, is hardly ideal either. A large study published last year found that overweight and obese children were more likely to drink low-fat milk. Reviews and large long-term studies, including the Physician's Health Study, have concluded that milk product consumption has a dose-response relationship with prostate cancer risk, perhaps even more so with low-fat versions of the product. Other diseases have also been linked to dairy product consumption, including breast cancer and other cancers of the reproductive system. Healthier, more absorbable forms of calcium can be found in leafy green vegetables, beans, and other plant foods, which offer overall better protection of one's entire health profile. The guidelines should do its best to steer Americans to the healthiest possible choices for nutrients, not the products where one must first consider the risks before assessing the benefits. And for your convenience, I have brought all these studies I've referenced for your review. Thank you.